For years, the woman in our next story lived in the most painful kind of limbo. Her son had disappeared, and there wasn't a shred of evidence of what happened to him. And she may never have known his fate, if not for a quick-thinking rookie detective whose tools included the Internet and some plain old common sense. But to solve this cold case, she'd also need the help of a killer. Here's Keith Morrison. It's a strange thing that happens among the bogs and marshes, the soft soil here in coastal Florida. Things have a way of coming up, things buried in the ground in the past, or both. It was July 2003, beaches quiet, snowbirds back up north. So no one noticed at first what was starting, inland a little, in a town called Pembroke Pines, where Donna Velasquez, just three months a detective, a rookie really, had just been assigned to a brand new cold case unit. The sergeant came into the office and dropped a box of papers right on my desk and said, here, see what you can do with this. And I began to wonder, hmm, is this a test to see, uh, can she really do this? That the case was a challenge was understatement. And now all but forgotten mystery the disappearance 15 years earlier of a young man named David Jackson. And the file offered no hints, no pointers, nothing really beyond the basic bio. To unearth the truth, even the rookie cop knew she'd have to learn about the victim. And so she began with something easy. She found David Jackson's mother, Judy Carlson. Found Judy's son, actually, who called his mom. And he said, are you sitting? And I said, yes. He says, they reopened David's case. The detective and the mother talked about David for hours. Wasn't a problem for Judy. She loves talking about her boy, even now, to us. David was my first child. He was just, loved everything and everyone. Happy birthday to you. He would walk in the room and everyone would just be a magnet to him. David Jackson was the eldest of Judy's three children and Mark Jackson idolized his older brother. He looked out for me. And he was that way with his friends, with everybody. Bill Brown was one of those friends. In 1982, after high school, Brown and David Jackson worked together at a Burger King, where David became a manager. Brown also had a front row seat to the budding romance between Jackson and a pretty 16-year-old co-worker named Barbara Britton. They were together, and that's awesome. I mean, if you can find love, I mean, it, that's what we all want. And so, all these years later, Detective Velasquez paid a visit to the woman who'd been the girl who'd fallen in love with David Jackson. Happy to help, she told the detective. Same thing when we called on her to talk about the David she knew. He was a very good-looking man. You know, we just had an attraction for each other and started talking. Sweet, nice, kind. Swept me off my feet. He was a good guy. And as she talked, it became clear. Deep emotions would not stay beneath the surface. I was young. I was still going to school. This is my first love. Two youngsters in love. And then, well, things happen, don't they? Mom, I got something to tell you. I said, what? And they said, Barbara's pregnant. Judy was surprised, a little worried maybe, but nowhere near as worried as Barbara's parents, particularly her dad, an ex-Marine who was not very impressed with young Mr. Jackson. Or so Judy heard. Mr. Britton did not like him. I don't know why. Still, David said his mother was walking on air. He came home one day and said, well, Mom, I'm going to have to sell the truck. And I said, why? He said, I'm going to be a father and a husband, and that's not appropriate to have a truck, and I'm going to have them. So the pretty girl and the handsome boy got married. Big wedding, too, even though they were just kids. And very soon parents also to a son, John Jackson. And... They fought, made up, fought again. Babies having babies is no easy thing. We were just too young. And to have a baby all the time, I, you know, he was, it was difficult for him. And it was difficult for me. So no who was the first person to say, you got to get a divorce? My dad. How did David take it? He was just kind of like, OK. Let's just Get it find somebody, with. some lawyers, and, you know, see what we have to do. And uh -huh. that was it. The two divorced in 1985. David arranged weekend visits with John. How were they together? 
Oh, wonderful. Johnny just clung to them. They loved each other. And they all moved on. A couple of years later, Barbara married again. Michael Wolfe, an ex-military man like her dad. About the same age as her dad, too. Your dad and your new husband probably saw eye to eye a lot. They sure did. They had a lot in common. They would talk a lot. Wolf took Barbara and John to live with him in Arizona. But David wanted to be a part of his son's life, so he traveled out west to see the boy. He went out there with a friend of his, and they saw Johnny for three days. I got pictures of Johnny in like the old western town and everything. And maybe it was something about the distance, said Barbara. David and I became very good friends when I was out in Arizona, and we used to talk a lot. In fact, what she felt deep in her heart, she said, never did go away. I always loved David. And then, it was June 25th, 1988. David's brother, Mark, was flying into town to visit the family. David was to pick him up at the airport. But when Mark arrived, he waited and waited. No David. And Mark Jackson had a terrible feeling. No matter what, he'd have been there for me. I knew something was wrong. I knew something bad happened. Oh yes, very bad. And as the rookie detective Donna Velasquez poked around deep in the past, that something was reaching up through the mud to tell her its long neglected story. When we come back, just maybe nature could do some of the work. With the crazy weather and the water table that we have, if he were ever buried anywhere, somewhere along the line, you're gonna pop up. When Buried Secrets continues. <laughs>